Hey guys, welcome to this video. This is Mr. Myasis here. Um, talking from a little screen on the side there with uh, lesson five six, which is solving differential equations. So I'm going to go through a process that's called separation of variables. Basically, it means we're going to separate our variables x on one side, y's on the other, and then do anti differentiation to solve what we call a differential equation, um, which is basically an equation with a derivative in it, and we want to solve the um, either the general solution, which means it could have a C at the end, or the uh, particular solution, which means we're going to want to plug in a, an initial value or some value, some point, and then solve for that C and then put it, put it back, okay? So here are the steps. Here's the procedure for that. Excuse me, my, my, someone's at the front of my door. Uh, here's the procedure for that right here. I have it right here on the screen. Um, so you're gonna, we're going to follow that. And then, uh, you know, five and six are interchangeable, whichever one you want to do. So let's take a look at some examples here. Uh, i got to stop my pen from inking so we can move up. All right, let's look at example one. And excuse me if I reach for a fly swatter and kill some flies here. Um, I live in Ceres, California, which is riddled with flies. But, you know, I'm sure wherever you are, you have lots of flies, too. Um so, but if you watch my videos and you're a subscriber, you know that I deal with flies all the time. All right, so what we're going to do is um, we're going to find the general solution of this right here, x plus 2y, uh, y prime equals 0. So what I'm going to do, first rewrite y prime is dy dx, and I'm going to move everything that's an x over to one side and everything that's a y and, the, and, uh, and leave it on, the, on one side, the other side, okay? That includes a dx, so I want dx to go with the x's and dy's to go with the y's. So that's going to look like this. It's going to look like 2y dy equals negative x dx, right? Because I'm going to subtract the x over and then multiply both sides by x to get the dx on that side. Once I do that, I'm going to, um, now I'm going to integrate both sides separately. And then that's going to give me y squared. And this is going to give me negative x squared over 2 plus c. Now, I don't have to do plus c on both sides because, I mean, if you think about it, I put plus c on one side, plus c on the other side, and I said, you know, I, they're going to be two different c's possibly. So we only need one constant. So I recommend only doing the c on the x side. Um, and then this is going to be our particular solution. Or it's going to be our general solution, kind of. Um, so the next step here is to um, solve for y. And what I've done here is we're going to um, write my solution to example one as a pair of possible functions. So we've got f of x here. So I'm going to just separate it out because I've got a, a y squared there, right? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to have uh, positive, when I take the square root, negative one half x squared plus c. And then I'm also going to have um, negative square root of negative one half x plus c right? Uh, because I have positive and negative there um, because I have an, a y squared. Okay, let's take a look at an, uh, some more examples here. So find the equation of a function which contains the point 0, negative 3. So remember in the previous example, I found the general solution. In this example, I'm going to find the particular solution. And the way I'm going to do that is use that method called separation of variables. So I'm going to take... Um, now, I know the slope is equal to this here right here. So that means that um, dy dx is equal to x e to the x squared over y. So now I'm going to separate the variables. And I'm going to have y dy, because I'm going to multiply both sides by y, equals uh, x e to the x squared dx. Okay, And then once I separate the variables, I'm going to integrate both sides separately. y squared over 2 equals, um, this looks like a reverse chain rule here. So I'm just going to quickly show you what that reverse chain rule is. Since x squared, the derivative of x squared is 2x, I'm going to need a 2 inside and a 1 half outside. So these become my hook. So I'm going to have uh, 1 half e to the x squared plus c. 
Okay, so now that I have this, um, I am going to need to uh, determine the particular solution of this. Um, and the way I do that, okay, hold on, let's see. Um, we're going to go ahead and solve for y here. Um, so we're going to multiply everything by 2. Equals, uh, multiply both sides by 2. And that cancels this 2 out, cancels this one out, gives me e to the x squared. Plus, now 2 times c is just c, right? Because, well, 2 times c is just a con um, my, my face is like right here. Uh, 2 times c is just going to give me another constant. So I'm going to call that c2. All right. Um, and then since this is e to the x squared plus c2, um, I know this is going to be negative because my y value right here is negative. Okay. So I know this is going to be the negative function, not the positive function. Now what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to plug in 0 for my x um, and negative 3 for my y. So when I do that, I'm going to get negative 3 equals um, negative square root of, when I plug 0 in for x here, I'm going to get 1 plus c2. So what's that going to give me for c2? Well, I'm going to multiply the negative, which is going to give me 3, and then I'm going to square both sides, which is going to give me 9. And then I'm going to subtract 1, which is going to give me 8. So all together, all together now, I'm going to end up with y equals negative square root e to the x squared plus 8. And this is my particular solution. Hopefully you guys can see that and my face is not covering it. It's hard for me to tell how big the screen is here because um, in my screen it's very, very, very tiny and, and, and it kind of enlarges when I get it on YouTube. So um, y equals negative square root of e to the x squared plus 8 is my particular solution. Okay. All right. Let's take a look at one more example here, I believe. And that will be it for solving differential equations. So let's find the general solution. The general solution of y minus 2 x dy dx. So again, what we're going to do is we're going to put uh, all the x's and all the y's on one, on, on one side, right? So we multiply both sides here by dx. Notice here that I get an x dx here and a dy here. So I don't want that. I don't want really want that, right? I want the x's next to the dx and the y's next to the dy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide both sides by x and then divide the other side by y minus 2. So I'm going to end up with 1 over x dx and 1 over y minus 2 dy. All right, and then I'm going to go ahead and integrate these two separately. So the integral of 1 over x is ln of absolute value of x. I'll go ahead and put plus c there. And the integral of that is ln of absolute value of y minus 2. All right, now i got to solve for y. So uh, hmm, what am I going to do here? Well, uh, the ln's aren't actually equal to each other because i got this c going on here. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and, um, I'm gonna go ahead and ra raise each side to the e power. All right, so that's going to give me when I simplify this e to the ln of x is going to give me um, e to the absolute value of x no that's going to give me absolute value of x um, times e to the c because remember i've got a plus here so when i have these two in a power when you have two things plus you got to multiply them right oh you know what let me put the step in here it's going to be e to the ln of absolute value of x times e to the c e to the ln of y minus 2. Okay, That way you can see the, the, the algebra there. So then I'm going to have e to the c times absolute value of x equals absolute value of y minus 2. All right, um, I'd like to be able to um, drop these absolute values. Um, so the way I'm going to do that is uh, I'm, first I'm going to make e to the c just c2. Because, you know, e to the c is a constant, guys. So what I'm going to do is with this absolute value, I'm going to make it as um, plus or minus 
c2 times x, okay? Because because x could be right here, the y minus 2, it could be um, negative or it could be positive, right? So I'm going to be plus or minus. I only need to put it on one side, equals y minus 2. I'll go ahead and drop the absolute value now. Um, and then this plus or minus c2, well, that's just a constant. So I'm going to change that to c3. And some of you, and so y equals, and some of you are probably going, okay, c3x plus 2, here's my answer here. Some of you are probably going, wait a minute, you can do that? You could just change things into constants and just change it into c, a ver like a constant variable? And the answer is yes, because it's just a constant. I don't know what constant it is, it's just a constant. It might be 5, it might be negative 5. I don't really know until I have a particular solution. So this is a general solution. I don't know what that C is. It could be something. I don't know, so I'm just going to change it so it looks nicer, okay? Um, and yes, you can do that. That's well, within my algebra rules, okay? So last one here, let's look at the particular solution. Um, and notice here, this is the same problem we just did. So um, we have, we're going to use our solution, which was C3x plus 2 equals y from our previous one. And we're going to plug in 1 for x and set it equal to 1 half. So c3 times 1 plus 2 equals 1 half. And so I'm going to subtract 2. And I'm going to end up with c3 equals negative 3 halves. So my particular solution is going to be y equals negative 3 halves x plus 2. Okay, for this point right here, which the point in this case is 1 comma 1 half. All right, again, this is the particular solution. In the previous one, I found the general solution so that I could plug in my uh, value, whatever my point, whatever that was, okay? All right, so that's it, guys. That's solving differential equations using the method of um, separation of variables. All right, talk to you later, guys. Bye.